last Easter I did a video on a small FM beacon transmitter. It could be hidden in various places and you could track it down with a portable FM receiver. Here's the circuit I used, a one transistor FM transmitter on about 90 MHz with audio provided by one transistor audio oscillator. The signal for that was pulsed with a flashing LED in its collector circuit. This all worked quite well, but it was a bit of a current hog, with a 9 volt battery not helping things, because 9 volt batteries are fairly expensive for the amount of current given. You can simplify this a lot if you can get rid of one transistor and the flashing LED. In this game, simple is good. Fewer parts means it can be made small, cheap, and draw very little current, so a battery will keep going for hours and hours. Such a unit was described by Eric VK3EAC in the September 2016 edition of the EMDRC Bulletin. Designed for 27 to 29 megahertz, it's a super simple, very elegant circuit, using a resistor in series with an electrolytic capacitor to do the CW pulsing. This is my version, very similar to the one in the EMDRC bulletin, except I've changed the frequency a little bit. It's using a crystal on 36.864 MHz. It's a off-the-shelf crystal, and it happens to be in a part of the band dedicated to low-power transmitters, at least here in Australia. Added is a light-dependent resistor, which shuts the unit off when it's in the dark. Having a look at the circuit, I too was able to get it to successfully work with a 1.5 volt battery. In fact it even oscillated with 1.2 volts. It was quite easy to get the circuit to oscillate, but getting it to pulse was harder. There is a lot of interaction between when I adjusted the trimmer capacitor, which I had in a different position of the circuit to the original because I wanted one side to be earthed, and the frequency of pulsing. In fact, there are a lot of times when the trimmer was set at certain positions when the thing wouldn't pulse at all. It was just a continuous carrier. Interaction was also noticed with the position of the antenna, either tapped along the coil via a secondary coil or, as here, connected directly to the collector, and also the length of the earth connection. If you're going to make this a really reliable circuit, you'd probably want to add a buffer stage which could also give a little bit more output power. The inductor is just nine turns of solid wire on a six millimeter drill bit. It's spread out over about 10 millimeters. It's not all that critical, provided you can resonate it with the trimmer capacitor and if needed, another parallel capacitor. If you don't have a trimmer capacitor, you could just do as was in the original circuit and have a fixed capacitor only. The original circuit used 120 picofarad, which was fine for 27 megahertz, though on this frequency you'd want it to be a bit less, say 82 or 100 picofarad. Also, if you didn't want to include the light dependent resistor, just short across it, and the oscillator will oscillate at all times. This is nearly two kilometers from the transmitter site. I should mention that the transmitter is in a tree only about one to a half meters above the ground and the antenna is very limited. It's only about a meter or so of wire so it's well under a quarter wavelength on its operating frequency of around 36 megahertz. So at two kilometers it would probably be audible for another kilometer or so more but if there was a better antenna the range could double again. I think you could say this test has been successful. 
only a few milliwatts, a makeshift antenna and around two kilometers range. <laughs> If you are interested in portable antennas like this to go pedestrian mobile or QRP portable, then check out my latest book. Hand carried QRP antennas is full of practical ideas. Yours for under $5 US. It's an Amazon ebook and you can find it by going onto Amazon and searching hand carried QRP antennas.